Hey everybody, what's up? Andrew Hockerell here. We are live from Adobe Max right now. If you're watching on Behance or YouTube, it's great to see you. If you're live here at Adobe Max with us, come visit in the Adobe Community booth. We have great content coming to you all day. And right now, we're starting out with some 3D stuff. So I'm going to run back here onto the stage, keep watching, and hang out with us at Adobe Live. Hey, Wes. Hey, Andrew. What's up? Welcome uh, to Adobe Live. Thank Hi, you for everyone. having me. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, so go ahead and introduce yourself. I know we're talking 3D today, but yep. let us know what you do and who you are. Okay, thank you. Uh, hey, everyone, I'm Wes McDermott. I'm head of our Substance 3D Evangelist team, and I'm here to talk about some 3D stuff with After Effects and uh, excited to get started. Yes. Thanks for having me. It's going to be so fun. So if you have questions, as always, put those questions in chat. It is a live, live, live stream. Uh, nice to see you. We have Calix here. We have Oliver, Andrea, Cody, all kinds of friends. Let us know where you're watching from. Leave us some red hearts in chat. And let's hop into some 3D stuff. All where right, let's going? do it. All right, great. OK, well, I'm going to start off by just playing a video. So um, hitting play, I'm going through this. So just a little backstory. So what this is, is, uh, okay, so I play a lot of games. Yep. Lately I've been playing Starfield, which came out fairly recently. Okay. And I've got super inspired by it, and I thought, could I just create like a little fan art Starfield scene yes. inside of Substance with After Effects? So After Effects has the new 3D capabilities to yes. import 3D content. Which just came in, it came out, right? Uh, well, Brand it's new. been in beta S for a while. New, yes. Yeah. But uh, the, 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 we're doing some really cool stuff with Substance and After Effects, and I'm super excited. So what you're seeing here is just showcasing the 3D work, a lot of the compositing stuff that I was doing in After Effects to build the scene. And what I'm going to do today is just kind of walk through so you can kind of see how this whole entire process came together. So here you can see that this is all the 3D elements in After Effects that I created using Substance Tools. We're going to talk about Substance Painter and how I was able to texture and author these maps, get them into After Effects for animation. Uh, it, yeah, we got a little send to uh, surprise there. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Oh my goodness. I've been playing with this for several months now and it's just, I, I'm super excited about the capabilities that we can do with this. That's gonna be so cool. And for a long time, these were completely separate workflows and they're starting to overlap a little bit more and more and start to integrate together. Yes. Which I think a lot of people have been wanting is that ability to have true 3D in an After Effects space, not have to go back and forth. Now we have, hey, these marry, they work well together yes, and absolutely. have awesome results just like that. Yeah, and so, uh, like I said, I was playing the game a lot and I just got really inspired by the style and what it was doing and I thought, I'm gonna try this with After Effects. So th the funny thing about it is, okay, so let's take a look at this. So to start, you can see this is my After Effects scene. Okay. And if I just kind of pan around, you can see that I have this like full 3D scene that I created. And one of the things that's really interesting, like if I look at one of these little uh, ground planes that I'm working on, let me just try to grab one. You'll notice my timeline is getting uh, pretty large. I'm so stressed. But here, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but if I grab hold of this little guy, you can see I can move this. And this is just part of the scene here. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. So they're just tiles that are kind of tiled around. Yeah, exactly. And so I started off, I'm going to show you how I do this technique inside of uh, Substance Painter. Okay. So I started off and I thought, okay, well, could I get in something really detailed like this ground? So let's take a look at how that works. Cool. So we'll jump over to Substance Painter here. Okay. Let me open it up. All right, so this is just the plane that I was using. Now, one thing about this plane, as you'll see, is I'm going to grab a material and apply it. Now, to get the material, what I did was I jumped over to our Creative Cloud desktop app, and underneath uh, stock in 3D, you can see that I can browse all of these substance material assets. Yes. We also have models and all kinds Honestly, of content. There's like thousands and thousands of things that you can oh, grab yeah. off of here. Yes. Anything you need to get started, it's there. So I found some different ground, and you can even click this button and send it right into Substance Painter, uh, like this. The integrations are so nice. Yeah, just it like, is. oh, you want yeah. this here? Here you go. Right. And it's really great for like, like when I was having like these little moments of inspiration and I was wanting to kind of jump in and just see how it worked. So here I have the, the rock, drag and drop, apply it to the plane, it's gonna come in here. And it starts to look like this. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna tile this or repeat it across the surface a little bit. So I'm gonna come over to this window and let's just set this to like maybe a value of say two. And so if you are a creative that's watching this that maybe isn't super familiar with 3D, but maybe you've experimented in Illustrator, 
very similar idea here, right? We're using yep. those substance materials, exactly. but here we're just applying them to a plane instead of applying them to text or a 3D object. Uh, so if you have not gotten into 3D, maybe you have a little bit in Illustrator, and if not, go try it. Illustrator Substance 3D is so fun. It is, it is great. That's another one of the awesome attributes that we have is Substance working with Illustrator, yes. Substance working with After Effects. It's, it's a really exciting time. Yep. Okay, so we've applied yeah. our material here to the plane. Yeah, so I'm just going to increase this little value here on this height, and then the next thing I'm going to do, let me just play with that for just a slight second, and I'll enable my height information so you can Whoa. see that I can actually display Place and make this look like a bumpy yes, surface. Yeah, that this, makes me feel gross. Yeah, it, it's, way, it's way too much, right? So I don't, I don't want to do this. So let's just scale it down a little bit. We'll oh, get something okay. like that. There yes. we go. But the idea was that I wanted to create something that looks like a, an actual surface. And so if you know anything about 3D, maybe there's some people watching who's like knows about this. This is one thing that's crazy. So this scene is made up of, when I export it, 2.4 million polygons. Oh my goodness. So it's super dense. Okay. Yeah, so once I had this, it was like, yeah, like I said, super, super dense. This is also a substance material, so I can come over and start to change some of the parameters. So for example, yes. the color. Which I love in the parameters, usually go across all of the different uh, products that it is available, right? So Illustrator, same thing, has the parameters to where we can change tiling, colors. Sometimes there's one that I use all the time that's bacon, and you can yeah. choose the like cookedness <laughs> yeah. of the bacon uh, yeah, and yeah. change how, like, how cooked the bacon is. So there are a lot of those as you're playing around with them. Look at the parameters, see if anything is in there that's like weird and wonky and fun, and have some fun with it. Yeah, exactly. So here I just came up with this. I could mix and match different materials. I exported this out of Painter. So one thing I could do, which is kind of new, now this is this is total beta. I probably shouldn't be showing this, but okay, it's love like, it. well, you know what? I better not get in trouble. But imagine you could go to Send To and just send this right into After Effects. That would be it. pretty cool. Yeah. That would be cool if that was a thing. A yeah. uh, question from chat is asking, um, what kind of computer are you using for this creation? Asking questions about like upgrading. What do we need to be running some of this 3D stuff? Oh, that's a great question. So uh, typically on 3D, I'm using um, a PC. So I'm using yep. like an NVIDIA GPU. That's awesome. However, in the last few months, uh, I've kind of switched back to you know trying things out on Mac. So this particular Mac is a, is a new uh, M2 Max Pro. Okay. And I will say it is maxed out, so it has 96 gigs of RAM. Ooh. Yeah, and it is handling this phenomenally. It's like really okay, good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was really impressed. Yeah, so All right. you, it's great to have a beefy system. You don't yeah. necessarily need a beefy system, no, but it you helps don't. to make yeah. it work faster. Right, yeah. but it helps. Got but it. the new M2 uh, chips are doing like super well. Cool. So yeah, it's working great. All right, so let's jump over here to uh, After Effects again. So like I said, this is where this came in. I imported this little layer. And so if I just kind of zoom in on it and take a look. So I have this little uh, mesh, this little layer came in. And you can see, because I displaced it, I'm getting a lot of this like really great detail in here. Yeah. And so the, the trick on this, this is something that I would do in another application. Like for example, something like maybe a game engine like Unreal Engine. And one of the things I thought was, can I use those same workflows and do that in After Effects? And it turns out you can. Oh, that's <laughs> so awesome. So I brought in the, the layer. I duplicated it 52 times. Okay. So if you recall, I said earlier, hey, this little mesh, it's super dense, uh, 2.4 million polys. And then I duplicated that layer 52 times, and then you can see my speed and how I can move this around is, it's pretty nice. Yeah, that's like yeah, a, what, it's, like it's, 100 million polys? Like there's uh, a lot going yeah, on there. Yeah, there's a lot going on. So you can see that all I did was really just kind of kit bash the scene together to kind of you know put it to, to get to this state. Yep. Now something else I'll kind of showcase here is a couple other assets. Like, let's take a look at this little piece right here, this little uh, structure. So I could have modeled that or created that in a 3D program, but what I decided to do, because I was just you know working off a couple moments of inspiration, uh -huh. so let's go back to Creative Cloud. I can jump over here to my models and maybe do a search in here for my different models. So like maybe it's, um, I'll try this, sci-fi, uh, Let's just see what that comes up with. And this is really great to search things. If you are not someone who does 3D modeling, but you still want to build a scene, really, really great. There are so many assets available to you for you to try out, try to build a scene, and see what you can create. Exactly. In my brain, again, I'm not a 3D guy. In my brain, this is Animal Crossing. And I'm like <laughs> yeah. buying my little all assets right, yeah, and yeah. decorating my apartment. <laughs> and like that's all yeah. that I think about whenever I scroll through here to find these objects. That's awesome. So that's exactly what I did. There's all these little uh, cool little shapes and stuff that were awesome. So I just grabbed a, one of these that, that I found that structure. Uh, I was calling it a structure, that little building. I think it was an antenna. Okay. But, you know, 
hey, it's, it's, it's your world. You make it what yes, you want, right? You can piece together whatever right. you want. It's so all 3D. I brought that into Substance Painter. Let's take a look at that. So now I'm going to jump back over to Substance Painter. Let me open the scene. So we're going to go to uh, this little structure. And we'll open that up. And so I brought that in really quick, started texturing it inside of Substance Painter. So here's what it actually looks Ooh. like. Again, once this texturing was done, I can just simply uh, file and then just send that right into After Effects. Now, again, like I said, that is a beta feature. That is something that's coming that we're working yep. on. We have s announced it during another live stream. So, okay. but so it counts. what you can do right now, though, is just do export textures. And if you want to just use this GLTF, that is what is being supported inside the After Effects beta that you can get on the CC desktop right now. Cool. And it works awesome. Awesome. So yeah, it's great. Um, okay, let's take a look at texturing this guy. So let's see. Um, let's go over to this little main building and I'll just show you something that I did. This is so interesting to me when we get into the texturing because it is a 3D object, but it basically, you're painting onto the 3D object to make it look like something else, right? Exactly. So if we look at the main base structure, right? So there's no texture on it. This is what yep. I got from 3D Assets. And yes, you can build all these textures yourself, like just you know go nuts and it's, that's fun, but sometimes you just want to work quickly. So we ship with all of these, like what we call smart materials. Now let me show you what this means. So I'm just going to do a search for one of these materials. I'll grab this, uh, this, this painted scratch metal and I'll just drag and drop and just place it right on the middle and boom, it's textured. That's so <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And like, okay, here's my question. On the edges and stuff, is there a parameter that it's like hitting the rust on the edges or is that just coincidental? No, like, there's parameters for that. That's, that, that's a great segue. So let me show you how I might do this manually. So first off, let's do this. Let's create a fill layer, just like a fill layer inside of Photoshop. Okay. And I'm just gonna make this uh, a metal surface, uh, give it a little bit of roughness, something like this. And then I'm gonna add like, uh, actually I'm gonna take the metalness off for now. And let's just, let me give this like kind of a little gray material. Okay. Now let's say that I do want to add a lot of that metal edge wear that you're talking about. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly add another layer. This is gonna be a metal layer on top of it. Then I'm gonna mask this layer just like I'm doing a layer mask in Photoshop. Okay. So here I'll just grab my layer mask. And then I'm going to add what we call a generator. This is just like adding a filter in Photoshop. Okay, and someone's and then, asking, can you upload your own photo and have it be a 3D asset? Uh, I don't think so. These are like actual 3D models, correct? Yes, but that is an awesome question. So we do have another application in the Substance Collection called Substance Sampler. And it, it, think of it like just sample the world around you. And what you can do is with Sampler, you can use your phone or a, uh, like a, you know, a, dia, uh, you know, a, a Good camera. Yep. I can't think of the term. Yes, a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're going through, and you just shoot a series of photos of that, and then you take those those images, still images, drag them into Sampler, and it'll use and compute and create a 3D model for you. Oh, that's really yeah, cool. Just from a series of photos. So yes, Sampler is the answer. Uh, yeah. Yes, is your answer. Okay. So we're getting the edges. How right. have we now gotten texture on the edges? All right. So like I said, I'm just going to darken that so we can see it. What I've done is I've just added this metal edgeware. Think of it like a filter. I've just added metal edgeware filter on okay. top, and as I increase and decrease the edgeware, it knows uh, it knows how to figure out where the edges are, and then we can add some of these edges right here. And then if I need to, I can say come over and grab like a paint layer. Let's jump over to let's say uh, my brushes really quick, and you can see we have all these brushes. If we look, yep. and I do a quick search here for a photo, we have lots of these Photoshop brushes. You can import oh, your wow. own Photoshop brushes. Let's grab one of these concept brushes that uh, Kyle has created. You're Kyle T. Webster, yes. the crossover of the century. Hi, Kyle. Um, Kyle came here with us at Max today, so hi, Kyle. And uh, definitely going to use his brushes. They're the best. And so now I could even come in and just kind of paint r this manually if I want to on top of what, what I was working world? with. Uh, on side of this little grunge, and it's all non-destructive. So here I can go back and you know rechange these values of like, just dragging a slider, you know, just having fun. That's with That's crazy, it. and you're not painting color on there. You're painting basically like that edge filter. Exactly. That's right. so cool. Yeah, and then exactly. it gets the metallicness underneath. So it's really painting with values as opposed to painting with color, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you can paint with color too. You can, you know, it's it's very much like like feels like working in Photoshop, but just across painting with materials 3D. in yes. 3D. Yes, yes exactly. So what I did again, just created this little asset, dropped this back over here to After Effects, and uh, placed it in the scene. And then I started building in a couple of these different comp layers. So let's take a look at some of these. So for example, I had these foreground rocks that I did. And so this was something that I, if I just move my camera across, you can see that 
Uh, just going with that kind of cinematic feel, that's another thing. <laughs> I get excited, I love this No, stuff. you're good, I yeah. love it. Uh, the, the cinematic feel, feel of what you're doing with like uh, building 3D, you know? And so yep. I'm thinking, oh, I'd love to have this nice like depth of field uh, piece like in the foreground, yes. you know, to kind of help Multiplane draw kind yeah. of, yeah. So these little rock assets here uh, that are coming in, these are coming from, and if I just enable it here, we can probably see it. This is what it looks like. So this little rock asset, so I jumped into our Substance Modeler tool okay. and quickly modeled just some rocks. Just, just Really, they were just blobby shapes. Went back to my 3D assets, grabbed a rock material, slapped it on, done. That's so, crazy. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's that moment of inspiration that I just kept going with, yeah. and I didn't really get hampered by the tools. It was just having ideas and creating with it. Uh, so this is, a little, this is this little foreground element. You can see I'm just adding some depth of field effects on top of it. Uh, here I have this, what's called a depth pass. Okay. So right here I needed to like make a screen that was, if I use the camera lens blur inside of uh, After Effects, yep. it, this is like the layer that lets me decide what's going to be in focus and what isn't. Okay. And this is, uh, this is completely separate, but th that's kind of what um, like the portrait mode on a phone does, right? Exactly. It's just taking kind of the values of the depth of the photo. All right, so just looking at some of my next comp window here, let's see if it's rendering correctly. Let's go to, uh, let me move this guy over here. And Chad, if you have questions about any of this, I have questions, uh, and I get excited. I did just as excited as you, because this is just cool stuff that's like foreign to me. Chad, if you have questions about anything 3D, let us know um, in the chat. All right, take it yeah, away. Yeah, here was another scenario where it was like just using all of the different you know, Adobe tools. So this was Adobe Stock. I was like, oh, I need, I want a little mountain backdrop. Now, yeah. I could have done that in 3D, but I was like, ah, I want to be fast. So I just went out to Adobe Stock and grabbed this and threw it in for my background. So that's what this piece here was all about. And it, what's really neat about this is like, you don't have to build everything in 3D. There's this really nice mix of the things that you know to do in 2D and how you can transition and use 3D to help extend and, and take what you're doing to a different level. Yes. And it, the two worlds can really kind of come together very nicely. And that was one of the things I loved about using After Effects in this particular Yeah, case. and especially using things like Generative Fill, being able to remove objects from backgrounds and Generative Fill the background, you can get some really cinematic looks by pulling pieces apart, by moving them against each other. Um, it's really great to show that workflow across different products to create what's in your head on the screen. Exactly. And so, like, for example, here's just the 3D scene of the building, and I brought in just a couple more little assets that I had found and that I worked with inside of um, 3D assets, brought them into Substance Painter and textured them, and you can see I can just move these little guys around. Uh, this one in particular here it has a little bit of a, um animation to it, so let's do this. Let's uh, look at this through, like, my default camera, and I can just kind of zoom in on this guy. Move this over here just a slight, a little bit. There we go. So then I have this guy here, and this is the 3D model itself. Okay. So as I was saying, you can you can import, and when you bring in these 3D models, I think it's this guy here that's animating. Oh, no, this was just my camera move. So what you could do, for example, is let's say that I have this guy. I'm going to open up my position. I can set a keyframe here. Let's just move this slightly. Grabbing the 3D model itself in 3D space, just moving and animating it. Here, yeah, remove it. Yeah, just using keyframes as if we would with text or with an image, but this time it's moving in 3D space. Right, and so now look, just just like that, just a quick little animation that I'm kind of working with here. Now I forgot That's to so keyframe cool. the rotation, but you can see that it's it was really amazing for me to be able to like take these assets that I created in Painter, export them, get them into After Effects, and then animate my 3D content. Yeah. But then have all the power of After Effects to do all of the compositing work on top of it. And this is kind of the new piece of this, is being able to animate true 3D objects within After Effects, right? Yeah, exactly. That is, and it's, it has been in beta for, for quite a while, yep. I think. Uh, so if you're really wanting to try it, you can just go to this uh, Creative Cloud desktop app under beta apps and grab After Effects and that will have all of the features I'm talking about here. Cool. And a great question from the chat, what 3D model file types can you import? Uh, that is a great question. So, uh, so the ones that I recommend and that I use are going to be uh, GLTF model files okay. uh, or GLB because those are going to uh, have the 3D model file. It's going to contain all the materials that you've created in the Substance apps and those work great. All, you bring them in and you have your materials applied. I think it also works with like OBJ, FBX. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't. Don't misquote me there. But I, 
I'm using GLB because that's the one I've been using, but yes. it does support other I formats. do know that it works with OBJs because you can export 3D from Illustrator as an OBJ and then yes. bring it into After Effects. If you're doing type, you can animate your type from Illustrator into After Effects using an export as an OBJ, which is really cool. And so here you can see wow. I've got a couple uh, mistakes here because I've been moving things around. <laughs> but uh, overall, this is kind of what the scene looks like. Now it's starting to uh, you know, render a little bit slow. I've got all the bells and whistles turned on, all yes. the effects layers and stuff. But this just gives you kind of an idea at the end here of like once all the pieces come together, I've got my camera in, I'm doing a quick animation. Uh, the, the transition I did from the sky to star, which you can see here, um, having a little bit of problems running this guy. So let's see if it loads. And uh, while it's loading, a question from chat that I don't have an answer to, but you might. Can yeah, you render other styles besides realistic things? Can you do something that is cartoonish? Absolutely, yes. So that is another thing. What I'm showing here is just, like I said, I was just inspired to kind of work through this scene. Uh, but you can do uh, completely other things as well. Like, it, it doesn't have to be realistic, kind of game art-like. Uh, we do lots of uh, really colorful, stylized art pieces. All that stuff is possible in substance. Cool. Uh, so here's the scene where you can see I, to do the transition from the ground to space is I uh, created two or three different comps uh, that represented each kind of uh, level of where I wanted to do the, trans the transition. Yep. And so it starts on the ground and then once this is done I'm just animating my camera. So it's a 3D camera on, now at this point it's now a 2D plane yes. and it's pushing it up. So you can see this is what this scene looks like here. That's so, And I've seen a lot of people do this workflow with generative fill to have whatever their content is at the bottom yeah. and then generative expand up or generative expand out and then do like an eternal zoom kind of effect. There's a lot that you can go back and forth with these elements as you're bringing them in, bringing them out. And the things like the sky and the fog, are those just images or are those 3D models as well? Uh, the, the, well, the sky, the stars, I'm trying to find the comp because sometimes like when I'm just doing stuff for fun, I, I, I kind of stop naming stuff. You oh, know? 100%. And now I can't find what do. I did with it. Yeah. But the stars, are, that, that was just done in After Effects. So it's oh, just using cool. particles and stuff. So that was really fun. They actually have a little twinkle to them because they're animated with the noise. Uh, the clouds. Uh, this was just a, a cloud image I found online really quick. So yeah. uh, you know, you and it could be something maybe use you know Firefly to hey generate me just some wispy clouds that you can just bring in. So yeah. that's all I did, and I just layered them on 3D layers and um, just kind of blended everything together. That's really cool that you can mix 3D with the still images and still have it feel like add to the ambiance by not having to like run a fog simulation or like anything too crazy. It's like, yeah, I can do clouds and with my camera movement, it's going to look like it's moving and look like it's organic. Yeah, and that, that's a really good point because, you know, so what I'm showing here is pretty basic, but like it's, you, you could easily go to like uh, another 3D program and like render out like, um, oh, I want an actual volumetric like, you know, cloud layer and render that and do all that stuff. But my goal on this was like, I didn't want to render anything. Like I didn't want yes. to say like, okay, well, I could use something like maybe Cinema 4D or something to like render the ground and all this and do a camera push and bring that in. Yep. Uh, but what I really want, and this is me testing the workflow, was that I created these assets inside of you know Substance, brought them into After Effects. This is all real time, and I can animate and work. When I wanted to make changes, and I did, so the different colors that I had here on the ground, let me get in really close so you can see it, uh, on this object, this is the other thing that I love so much. I jumped back over to Painter, made some changes, just exported back over my object, yep. it reloads here, done. That's so No cool. rendering. <laughs> and so that's, that, to me, that, that was what I love the most. Yeah, I love, and we're just gonna talk about this because I know people always ask, the chromatic abrasion that's happening, that we see like kind of as it blurs out, we have that like green, purple oh, kind yeah. of toning coming out. Uh, <coughs> oh my gosh, so oh, sorry. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm glad I got too excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that, so just as chat, that's called chromatic abrasion. When you get that blur and it starts to separate the colors, uh, most notable in like Spider-Man, yeah. you see that kind of thing. I love that that has an effect here. Uh, we have one more question to chat to close it out. Is there a way to create bone structures that connect to 3D models and After Effects? So it sounds like maybe rigging kind of stuff? Yeah, so you can't really do that, uh, like creating like a, a traditional rig that you would like in a 3D program. But one thing that you can do that I, I was thinking about experimenting with is they do have the puppet tool. Uh, oh, yes. I forget what it's called because, yes. again, I'm, I'm you know, something I want to experiment with. But I did thought, I, I was having this idea about like, maybe taking some part of my 3D model, when you bring it in as the 3D model, one thing that you can do is you can use, you can pass that 3D model up to like an effect like calculations. Yep. So real quick, anything that, uh, any effect that can take a 3D layer or take an input 
can take a 3D layer. Oh, so you cool. can have the 3D object use a solid with calculations that basically it's like merging it down to 2D and then use the puppet tool to warp and animate it. So Heck I, yeah. I, I kind of think yeah. there could be some so, really neat so stuff So maybe there. is the answer. Yeah. Uh, so stick Not around with us. Not traditional rigging though. Not traditional. But yeah, yeah, stick around with us for the rest of the day. Camera 4 just yeah. appeared out of nowhere. Hi. Oh, awesome. Um, stick around for us for the rest of the day. We'll be here with Adobe Live. There's great content coming all day. And there is even more content coming next week, every day from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Adobe Live is live, and I will see you there. Stick around for the rest of the day. Bye, everybody. Thanks a lot.